Yes. Good day, madam. My name is Thomas Eichhorst. I'm here to offer you an exciting opportunity to radioize your home, courtesy of the Tribic Electrotech Company. I'm not only an actor, I was also a musician. I was on the edge of becoming a dancer. I speak five languages. So I have a, 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 a resume that is kind of really particular. I'm between theater and, and, and movies and television in a lot of different countries. It's really weird. It's very, woo! this guy is gone wild. How has he done it? We want to know how he has done it, you know. And then uh, it's also because some of my performances in theater or in, 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 like, you know, I don't know if you have seen Inglorious Bastards. Yeah, there is one scene that was a real nice piece of work. And it has given me a huge, huge feedback worldwide. So I have these, I have these kind of things all over the places, also in theater, you know. And that, 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 that makes a man in a certain sense because there are reference points this guy is, is, has not finished to surprise us because he surprises us every five years, not just because he's good, but because something happens that even I do not understand. I need to know about Germans hiding in trees, and you need to tell me, and you need to tell me right now. I respectfully refuse, sir. <laughs> The horrible thing in, in, in acting is that you always produce, either you produce your idea of how the scene should be. So you think, oh, at that point he must cry because when I read it, I imagined that he must cry. Okay, and then you, you, you try to cry and then that's the perfect thing with the camera. The, the camera shows a guy who tries to cry. It doesn't show a camera. It doesn't show a guy who, who cries. <laughs> the beauty with the camera, really, that's, that's uh, uh, the moment you have something, you do not even need to show it. You just need to have it and be it. Because, like, you know, like, I have something here. Look, I have something here. For the time being, you know, I don't know what it is. But now I have an image. And it's beautiful, <laughs> and it's great, and I do not, and 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 I do not even show it to you. Let's say it was a moment where I consciously put myself in opposition to somebody else. So you become yourself when you say no to somebody who imposes something on you. That's generally what happens with, with, with children uh, and, and parents. But, but for me, it, of course, it happened earlier because yeah, you, when you're three years old or two years old or four years old, you say, no, I don't want this. No, yeah, uh, I want this. And mommy gives it to you. I don't, or, 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 or there is punishment and all this stuff. But this is not really where I got conscience of my own. I got consciousness of my own when I was eight years old and... My father promised to us, the five kids, promised to me, promised to us that everybody would get an instrument of his choice for his eighth birthday. And then we would also pay the fee for the music school. So I was fond of violin. And for some reason, I do not understand. I mean, we had a very conflictual, I don't go into that. The father left early, but anyhow, so at when I was eight, he didn't give me a violin. He gave me a mandolin. And it was very weird because it was at the same time a present and a punishment. But most of all, it was a punishment. I didn't know why I got it because I hadn't done, done anything wrong. The thing is that I didn't get my violin and I couldn't understand why I couldn't get my violin. And I was eight years old and I looked at him and behind him was a window 
And in that window was the moon, because it was evening. I guess it was evening. Uh, but I, I picture it was the moon. I could have been the sun. I don't know. So, and in that moment, and he said to me, you won't have a violin. You won't play violin. And I know the exact moment when in myself, a voice said, yes, Richard, you will play violin. But I said it to myself. I don't say it. I don't. I didn't say it to my father. I said it to myself. And that's. And I was surprised to hear that voice. And of course, when he left, uh, the first thing I did was to buy a violin or from my own money, and then become. I became a violinist, and I did my diploma as a violinist. And then it turns out that it that I didn't become a, a, a musician. I wasn't a very good musician. But uh, the fact that you could get what you want, even if other much more powerful people say to you no, that is the thing that constituted me as a person. Then mentors, I got mentors when I actually knew really what I wanted to do. What's interesting is that the real masters or the real people who can guide you are those who have the love for transmission. They want to teach. They want to give what they have in order for youngers to to take it in and to get the benefit of it too. You know, my real first professional uh, master teacher was Francesca Di Sapio. She was in an, an American Italian actress, and she worked at the method. Actor studio in with Lee Strasberg. Uh, you see her in, in in The Godfather. She she did a lot of uh, movies with uh, Coppola, Francis Ford Coppola. She uh, uh, established an actor studio in Rome where I was living at the time. I was I was close to thirty, and I I, I knew that acting was my thing. I was an actor already since ten years, but I was looking for more. Uh, I was looking to connect. The honesty of my private feelings with the artistic in, I, 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 expression, and in theater I wouldn't get that enough because it's very exuberant what you do in theater. You know, it's very. It's and it's it's not as fake as I do it now, of course, but there still is kind of a hyperventilated emotionality because you have to reach the spectator who is far far so you exaggerate a little bit and I guess I, I'm more in love with the more intimate things and that was actually the thing that drew me to, to the work in front of a camera and then I discovered method acting and then I, because I was said I'm full of shit because then I was convinced I'm full of shit because all what I have gone through in my mind before was shit. Very poor background, very violent family, uh, no perspective whatsoever. Then I was said, I was told that I, I wasn't even a child that was wished for, but I was an accident. So it's not very motivating for a human being to grow up in these kind of terms, you know. And then you 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 find in with method acting, you find actually that whatever you had gone through emotionally, it's a gold mine. So I started to, 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 to give workshops quite early when I was 30, 35, but I stopped because my, my actor's career took over and exploded. And it's also that I thought I'm a little bit too young to, to teach. It was like I, I hardly understood the thing and I'm already pretending to be a master of it, and now I'm teaching it to the others, like I, I know, and you don't. It's kind of a thing, I felt kind of bad in it, you know? I'm not at ease at all with the abuse. The teacher's position is able to implement in the teacher's student's relationship, you know? So I stopped, and now lately, let's say in the last, 10, 15 years, uh, I did uh, I did a thing 
where I connect the dots, I would say, becomes a more and more holistic approach of, of uh, how to be, uh, what to do, what to express, how to express it, what to take care of, and is actually very connected to me as a private human being. Teaching now is more, I think it's an age thing, you know. Uh, I seem to have now the language to explain very complex things in a very easy way, and specifically in a way that people get it immediately. And it's also a capacity to make people understand that it's actually way easier than they, people make it, when you're young, you make things complicated. I react emotionally with my girlfriend when we have a love affair, that's beautifully to act emotionally, but as the moment negative vibes come up, don't react emotionally, because you're just bringing yourself down to the same level of the other. Yeah. And that's the good thing in teaching too. You keep things calm, less is more. Uh, uh, no, no, no. What are you feeling really? Well, don't show me what you think I need, I want to see. Let things be. Just be. Directors, painters, musicians, writers come into my dancers, come into my workshops because it's a holistic approach of, of how to Optimize your mindset, your body set, your mindset, your heart set. And it comes from a very simple statement. I got it from a friend. And she was asked, what do you need to do in order to, how do you prep, prep for your, your characters? And, uh, and then she said, you know, I, I need to be happy in order to work well. So what I do is I do everything I need to do in order to arrive happy on set. And then everybody happens by itself. You know, there is a saying which is really true. You do not get what you wish for. What you get is what you are. You can wish to become a wonderful human being as long as you want. But if you pass your days in a boring way, and you sit around, uh, don't have the guts to uh, go for a run or go for a swim or do a yoga session or call a friend. Uh, you have to you, you have to do something for what you want to get. Then the universe hears you. It, it's a little bit what I do, for example, uh, concentrate on, on the last 24 hours uh, you have spent. The last 24 hours. All what you have done in there, that is what you are. And if in those 24 hours, there is nothing you have done to become an actress, and you say all the time that you want to be an actress, and it's bullshit. Your words are bullshit. I did um, the reading of my script. I did uh, uh, a very nice yoga session. Last, uh, I did pranayama. I read a wonderful spiritual book, The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari by Robin Sharma, one of those spiritual teachers I really like. I wrote, I, 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 every day I write diary. I did my cold shower. I have, a, I have a routine in the morning, you know, that sets me for the morning. So I wake up very early. I do my bed, I make a cold shower, I drink my hot water, I do my yoga, I do my writing, I drink my coffee, I do intermittent fasting, I'm still fasting now, so I haven't eaten, and I won't eat until 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And I started a little bit of the bullshit work. I already repaired two radiators. I voided the, all the radiators of the house. I did this morning, yeah, uh, I did paperwork for this administration thing, a thing I really hate, but I did three of them. Yes. And I started already to, to connect the new internet uh, boxes which are here and which I will continue to do when we are done. Students are basically like 
every student in a certain way is either exactly how I was at a certain moment in my life, or is like I've never seen anybody, neither myself, in a situation like this. You know? uh, so I, I get to know the same situations I've already gone through. I see them in students and they come for help or advice. And then I have others who, who, who uh, uh, have things I've never experienced. I've never, I mean, I've never had problems with, with uh, a lot of pains in my belly, you know, like women can have when they have their menstruation or, 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 or because people eat not good or, or they, so there is an inter, there is always an interconnection with something to find out. So that's kind of, I'm very passionate about that. Because even, even if a student has a problem I have experienced, I cannot just give him the key I found for myself. Because it, it, it worked for me, does it, there is a probability that it works for him, but it's not 100%. Oh, I have found out, I can tell you. No, I have found out for me. Now, let's see if with my experience and what you give me, we can find a way that we find out for you. So that's passionate. So, so there is actually, it's a back and forth thing all, all the time. Violinist and the violin is a non-tempered uh, instrument. And that's one of those things uh, uh, where you really, the violin tells you how, in, 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 in what, what mood you are. If you are in a good mood, if you are relaxed. And at, on, a, on a level, you do not even know. Because the violin, you have really have to find the, the tone, you know, you, you look for it. And it's, it's, a very, it's a very symbiotic thing with, with the instrument. And you have to exercise daily, 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 for hours, for hours, for hours, in order to find a good, good tone. But then there are moments where you really feel great and, yeah, and you're happy to find your violin and you do it and it's nice and great and you knew it and blah, 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 blah. But there are other days you find you, you have the same feeling and it doesn't work. Something you are lower in quality than you thought you would be. And then there are days where you feel, uh, uh, and you go, and oh, the violin says, no, it's great. Oh, wow. And it goes. And sometimes you feel bad, and the violin says, yeah, it's bad. So <laughs> they're all different, they're all kinds of, of configurations. But the fact is that there is an instrument that is more sensitive than you are. <laughs> 